And I'm like about to cry and he's just like, hold on. I'm getting married next weekend in Pennsylvania and he'll be there. Why don't you crash my wedding and fuck Mark Parker? Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Ari Shafir, and today, all the stories are about nostalgia. You guys will absolutely love it. Please give it up for Miss Annie Letterman, everybody. My story is about uh, my happy place. You know, we all have that happy place that we can go back to whenever we're in dark times, that place from our childhood that just brings us back, you know, makes us feel happy. Uh, my happy place was Camp Swatara, my Quaker camp that I went to in upstate Pennsylvania. And I remember like when my dad and my mom would put me in the car and they'd drive me up. I remember the butterflies I'd get when I started to get, we'd approach you know, the, the entrance and they would drop me off and it was just like so amazing. There was just like bonfires and friendship bracelets and fucking dreams. Like I remember the pizza bagels, like every single thing about it. And then there was Mark Parker. Um, oh, he was just like the cutest counselor ever. He was so hot. He had an eyebrow ring. He knew like every lyric to every Dave Matthews Band song that you know he played on acoustic guitar at every fucking bonfire. And he could fuck up a hacky sack. Like he was just, he was so hot. Like I was like, I didn't even know what why my underwear was wet. I just knew that like, I knew two things about that underwear, that my mom had written my name in it and that it was soaking wet. I was like baby horny. I was like, what are you? I love you, these feelings. Ugh. And all the counselors were so cool and I fucking loved that camp. Um, camp did not love me back as much. I was just completely invisible, not cool at all. Like, when you got older, when you were like 13, 14, they would start, the counselors would start to wake up the cool girls at night and like bring them out to smoke weed and drink. And so I would, they would like wake me up. I'd be like, hello, yes. And they're like, do you mind moving over? Sarah's getting down. <laughs> And when you graduate from the camp at 14, you can apply to be a counselor. And all I wanted in my life was to be a counselor. I mean, they were like living the dream. They were just like so awesome. And I was like, I, you know, I would love to be a camp counselor at Camp Swatara, but I'm not gonna get the job. So I never applied because I was like, I, you know, I can't handle that rejection. It'll be too deep, you know? So um, instead I graduated from Camp Swatara and um, since I couldn't you know, smoke weed and drink with the counselors, I decided to just like go back to Philadelphia and just smoke and drink with real criminals. <laughs> and I just became like a horrible juvenile delinquent, was just stealing cars. Like my life just like <laughs> went completely downhill from there. So I went to some really dark times uh, and really struggled with alcoholism and drugs and really got fucked up. And I remember a moment just staring into a mirror, just like, what have you done with your life? You used to be a camper. <laughs> and I wrote in lipstick, I wrote on the mirror, I wrote, remember Camp Swatara. <laughs> and I left it there for like years, like just years and years, I never cleaned that mirror. And I would just look at it in my dark times and it would bring me back. And I could really like close my eyes and remember like the morning bell. And I could remember like the pig that they had at the little farm. I just remember the tire swings and the zip line and like the lake and everything and Mark Parker. I mean, it was just so incredible. So then a couple years later, I quit drinking. I moved to New York to start doing stand-up comedy and I am feeling good about myself. And right then on Facebook, I get an invite to a Camp Swatara reunion. And I'm like, oh my God, here's my time to shine. Here's my time to show them how cool I was. I wasn't invisible, I'm Annie Letterman. 
an open micer living in Bushwick. But I'm just like so excited to go and I look at it and I'm working that weekend and I can't go to the fucking reunion. I'm like devastated. And I go out, before I go out though, I, go, I, I take the opportunity when I realize that I can't go to the reunion to just friend request every counselor I ever had. Just everyone across the board. Don't give a fuck if they accept me. I'm just throwing it out there anyway. And I go, um, I go onto the subway all bummed out and I hear from behind me, I hear someone go, Annie Letterman? And I turn around and it's this guy, Dan McFarland, who was one of my camp counselors. And I'm like, holy shit. And he's like, oh my God. And like, first of all, I'm shocked he remembers me. Like, I can't even believe that he remembers me. I'm like, maybe I wasn't invisible. And he goes, Annie, this is so crazy that I'm running into you right now because I was just talking to one of the other counselors. Um, he was talking about your Facebook. He had looked at your Facebook and he's like, was talking about how hot you are. And I was like, me, hot? I was like, but who, who was the counselor? And he was like, Mark Parker. And I was like, oh my God! <laughs> Holy shit! I was like, I have wanted to fuck him my whole life! Before I knew what fucking was, I wanted to fuck this guy. I've measured every guy against him. I'm in love with him. I have loved him every day since camp. <laughs> Give him to me. Where is he? Put him inside me now. <laughs> And he's like, oh, well, he doesn't live in New York anymore. And I'm like about to cry. And he's just like, hold on. I'm getting married next weekend in Pennsylvania and he'll be there. Why don't you crash my wedding and fuck Mark Parker? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. I'm like, is Jesus real? Like, I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, I mean, fate, 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 fate. I'm like, this is just like gonna be the best experience. So I tell everyone, like, I'm going to bodega, guys. I'm going on the subway. I'm stopping homeless, man. I'm like, here's a quarter. I'm gonna fuck Mark Parker. <laughs> everyone knows. I'm like, this is gonna be the best day of my fucking life. Not only was it amazing that this had happened, but it's also like, I was wrong about who I was. Like, if I had applied to be a counselor, like, I might have gotten it. Like, I may have missed my fucking opportunity to live this fucking incredible life. Because how would he know, like, he wouldn't, losers don't get stopped on the fucking subway. Invisible people don't have Mark Parker saying they're hot. Like, so I go on his Facebook page and I write like, you're a kilf, and then in parentheses in case he doesn't get it, I'm like, a counselor I'd like to fuck. And then I'm like, that's not enough. So then I go on his, on, into his messages and I'm like, hey Mark, let's fuck. <laughs> And he writes back like, cool, um, yes, absolutely, I'm down. Um, so I pack my fuck bag, it's just a suitcase filled with underwear, obviously no condoms, cause I can party. And then I like, you know, I pull my little suitcase and I go in and I'm just like, I mean, I can't even like describe to you how I felt. I'm like, I can't wait to meet this fucking handsome ass fucking man. Like I just, I just remember him being like so tall and dark and handsome and like amazing and talented the way he fucking played Crash into me. I mean, <laughs> and I'm like, and just to see all the counselors in general, like to see my heroes again. And I like, you know, I like bust through the door and it's after the wedding because when you crash a wedding, you don't go for the ceremony. You go to fuck, obviously. <laughs> so I go in and I look around and I'm like, where, where are these old people? <laughs> oh, these are my counselors. <laughs> I'm like, oh, holy shit, they're all like balding and fat and like pregnant. And I'm like, it was like if 1990 froze, but they got old as fuck. <laughs> so I'm like, that's cool, whatever. Uh, Mark's gonna be hot. And like, I'm looking for him, right? And before I can find him, this woman I've never met comes up and she goes, oh my God, are you Annie? And I'm like, uh-huh. And she's like, oh my God, are you Mark's Annie? And I'm like, well, that's, I guess. Uh, and she's like, he's so excited you're coming. He's been talking about you this whole time. And I'm like, that's when I realized I'm the second most eventful thing that's happening at this wedding besides the nuptials. Like everyone's like, this girl's gonna come to fuck Mark. This is amazing. Mark's getting fucked. So then, um, you know, the dorksy parts and, um, and there he is. And let me tell you, he still has the eyebrow ring. <laughs> he had like those long fingernails, like he still plays guitar. 
Which, by the way, guys, just trim them. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't need to know whether I have HPV from your fucking fingernails. And I'm just like, holy shit. Everything that made him cool in the fucking 90s makes him so un-motherfucking-fuckable now. Keep in mind, I've quit drinking at this point. I'm sober as fuck. Like, there is no way to drink him hot. Like, this is my lot in life at this point. There's no other reason I'm at this wedding than to fuck Mark Parker. Like, I'm there to get it. And he comes over and he's like, hey girl, and I'm like, no. Oh, he's also got gay voice? Jesus fucking Christ. I got nothing to work with here. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I hatch a plan. I'm like, I am gonna get him so wasted <laughs> that he passes out and it's his fault he doesn't fuck me, right? I'm like, sucks, I was looking forward to it. Um, so it's, the plan's working, right? He's starting to bobblehead. He's got cookie monster eyes, you know? <laughs> He's fucking about out. And I see him, he pops a pill, and I'm like, Ambien? No. Adderall, motherfuckers. So now he's just, he's just there for me, guys. And I'm like, and he was like so nice, you know? So I had to fuck him. I had to, what was I gonna be like? This whole reason I came, I couldn't be all of a sudden like, I'm not ready. (laughs) Not ready, I aggressively was like, I'm gonna fuck you. I'm gonna fuck your dick. I don't know if you know what body part I'm gonna fuck, it's your dick. (laughs) Like at least we'll go back to his like nice room with this nice bed and breakfast. No, he didn't have his own room. I fucked Mark Parker on the pullout couch in another counselor's room. (laughs) So the sex was great, just kidding. Uh, (laughs) Terrible. (laughs) At one point uh, he goes down on me and he looks up and he goes, mmm, delicious. Like he's making a Yelp review of my pussy. (laughs) Like, um, delicious. Can we both be shot? Can we be taken out by snipers right now? Like someone should die after someone says that. So fucking humiliating. And I'm just like in my own personal Vietnam. I'm like, oh my God, how do I get out of this? So I close my eyes and I try to go to my happy place, but all that's in my happy place is mm, delicious. I'm like, God damn it. I fucked my happy place. Oh my God. But I like, after the deed is done and everything's been wet napped up, um, I just like go to bed feeling, you know, grossed out. Like I ruined camp for myself, but at least I saved camp for him. And he now goes to bed knowing that he's preserved this, you know, this crush and this relationship that he's always imagined having to. So I go to bed a hero. And then I wake up from those sweet, sweet dreams um, to Mark watching me sleep, which is always delightful. What a way to wake up. Ah, my life is in danger, terrifying. Just to have your mistakes just right in your face, like ah, the glistening from the eyebrow ring, great. So he, um, you know, he's staring at me and I go, oh, hello. Um, and he goes, you know what? I was looking at you watching you sleep, and I'm realizing, I think I do remember you from camp now. I'm like about to cry. He didn't remember me from camp. Yes, I was invisible. Yes, I was a loser. Do you know who I was to him? Some fucking stranger that friend requested him on Facebook and then was like, I'm gonna fuck your dick. And then I fucked him. I was just the chick from Facebook. So I guess the moral of the story is, don't rape yourself with someone else's body and never go back to your happy place. Don't fuck your happy place uh my only issue with telling this story is that mark is like so nice you know he's like such a good person and i'm just so afraid he's gonna see this 
you know? And I'm gonna feel so guilty and have to fuck him again. You guys, thank you so much.